Greetings and welcome to this uh, session where we have an opportunity to have a conversation with a, a colleague and a dear friend, uh, Remy Rieu, who is the uh, chief executive of uh, AFD, the French Development Agency, but also has uh, other hats, including having been the uh, chair of the IDFC, the International Development uh, Finance Club. We'll find out a little bit more about what that is, as well as uh, a bringing together of a lot of public development banks in the Finance in Common Initiative. So uh, today we have an opportunity to, to delve a little bit into what these uh, different ways of advancing the development finance agenda imply and, and how they can all come together in support of both uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and the uh, uh, Paris uh, Agreement. So, Remy, welcome back to CGD. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for the invitation. Pleasure. And uh, there are many topics we can talk about, mm. but I wanted to start a little bit with AFD and then we broaden out mm -hmm. the lens, if you like. And I know that middle of last year, uh, France, launched its new strategy mm -hmm. and uh, for international development cooperation and, and uh, AFD is of course part of that uh, is six months into the implementation maybe just to start with how would you say that this strategy differs from what was happening in the past you know what, what are the main elements of it that for you stand out and that your colleagues in AFD have now got to internalize um, it took us uh, a bit of time to come back as France and to um, replenish, reconstitute uh, our forces as a development, development player. Right. So, uh, you know, for, I don't know, for a decade, somehow we disappeared from view. Um, and uh, after COP21, so the, the driver was climate. Right. President Macron uh, arrived and I would say added uh, more classic development uh, issues, uh, interventions to the mix. And we somehow doubled uh, our capacity, financial capacity, uh, the policy itself and AFD uh, as part of it, uh, and came back uh, at 0.5, I would say, of uh, GDP, uh, which is like UK and right. the others. So we came back. Uh, uh, here um, and of course uh, to do that we use the classic uh, Instrument. instruments yeah. and narrative um, and I think now that we're back uh, yes time had arrived for France to propose something new uh, in order uh, not to slow down but maybe to surpass uh, existing limits for international cooperation. So the, the, the main message came from uh, this summit we organized in June. Right. Uh, President Macron, uh, uh, this new financing pact, he, he right. proposed other leaders and this Paris pact 4P agenda, which is basically four messages, uh, stop uh, opposing and reconcile uh, uh, climate and development. Second, well, each country has its own trajectory, long-term trajectory. We have to, to, to respect, but also engage dialogue. Third, we need more concessional resources. Right. <laughs> we need a concessionality shock. And fourth, uh, we need to be serious about uh, mobilization of private capital, right. other flows for um, global commons, I would say. So these four messages, which are somehow new, Mm -hmm. uh, this is what AFD, of course, as the implementing uh, agency, is trying now to, to unlock uh, and factor in its own uh, mandate and, 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 and strategy. So, so now you're, as you say, factoring in these uh, messages into your strategy. And one of them is uh, this focus on global commons. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, looking at global challenges and global public good much more as an integral part of the mm -hmm. agenda going forward. And at one level, conceptually, of course, you know, we say 
Look, we shouldn't think of this as being in opposition to development. Mm. They're mutually reinforcing. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the staff have to mm. focus on how to do that. And after six months or so, what's your take on that? Do, do you find this comes up as an issue in the day-to-day -day operations? Are the people who are implementing that message finding it relatively straightforward or hard? Share a bit your, your perspective on it. Probably this, this conceptualization, this new policy uh, uh, comes from our experience. Right. So I want to pay tribute to uh, our dear friend Jean-Michel Severino. He, he was the first one back in, uh, I think, 2004 yes. to say uh, uh, the fight against climate change goes hand in hand with the fight against poverty. And, and so for, for reasons we had less grant resources probably yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we were more into credit, uh, we, 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 we considered uh, climate as uh, on a par with, uh, with poverty alleviation. And so it, make, it makes 20 years AFD teams are trying to uh, mix the two. Right. So there's a lot of uh, experience within this agency uh, to share. Of course, this is what we're doing, and stop opposing uh, both dimensions. And, and actually, we, the, the driver is the climate, yes. and we rediscovered or reinvested into social and economic uh, because of climate, when other agencies are doing the, the, other, other, way the other way around. Yes. So, so I would say that it's now mainstreamed uh, within the agency for each sector, uh, which makes actually the next frontier uh, not only uh, being Paris aligned, this is, this is what we achieved uh, right. from uh, 2017 on, but be SDG aligned. Uh, that's really the, what we will put in the, in the new strategy soon. So, so say a little bit about being 100% Paris aligned, because I know you, you, your operations mm. have been. And when I say that to colleagues, sometimes they say, well, what I'm working in the education sector. What does it mean for me to be Paris mm -hmm. aligned? And, and I think that's exactly the kind of thing that you have been grappling with. So being Paris aligned doesn't mean uh, it all goes to climate. Exactly. exactly. It's really uh, take seriously what I was uh, one of the negotiator. We, we wrote down in the Paris Agreement, Article 2. Uh, which, which is about uh, development policies, incorporating climate. Yes. So being for us, being Paris aligned means two things. First, yes, verify uh, the consistency, uh, the quality of the projects we are accompanying. So we have now, uh, and we can share the data since uh, for 10 years now, it's the anniversary this year, an internal procedure called uh, the Sustainable Development uh, Opinion uh, Analysis. Yeah. And we, we grade, that you get on we all, grade of your, all the projects. All your projects yeah. And if a project has two poor uh, grades, uh, okay, we do not finance it. Right. But it's a, it's a comprehensive, it, uh, it's an SDG uh, notation. So it's not only climate, uh, it's the rest. And we try to maximize the, the quality. So that's one. And now we, this is what we are selling uh, to the market since uh, now more than half of our funding, our issuance uh, on the market follows a framework that is based on this uh, sustainable development yeah. analysis. And this is a tool that I think every uh, financial institution, public and private, can adopt and adapt, maybe. And could, In their could, own could, way. Could but become but some sort of uh, standard, I think. This yeah. is the discussion we have within IDFC and others. So that's one. The second element that is very important on uh, Paris alignment is really uh, to follow and support the trajectories of the country. So it's both micro, micro and macro. So, and we are doing a lot, uh, and we are very happy to see uh, now the CCDR, all this exercise, right. the World Bank, because th that was the missing piece in the Paris Agreement, have a say uh, and have a dialogue on the long term, on the NDCs and the long term trajectories of the country. So it's, it's both the quality of the countries by themselves, but also are they consistent, are they accelerating uh, the trajectory of the country 
uh, and could we uh, make it uh, more ambitious, actually, right. by international cooperation and dialogue? Which, which really brings us into this whole focus now on country platforms and, and using sure. the country as a plat, having a strategy for the country within which the, the support of all the partners is embedded in a way that is integrated and more coherent. And, you know, we've talked about this for a long time, but it's, I think there is genuinely now an impetus to move us in that direction, which, which I presume yeah. will come to, but, but your partnership conversations with the World Bank today, which is here in Washington, you, you have been all day, are all helping to move a bit in that direction. On, on just on the country platforms, yeah. I think we, we should listen to what this summit in June said about yes. uh, relying on the countries themselves. So I really see, and maybe there's something uh, that has to be corrected in, the, for instance, the, the just energy transition uh, schemes. Yes. Uh, we need to have the countries uh, at the helm, yes. at the helm of it. So it's both the political commitment uh, in the country platform, in, of course, in the discussion with the partners, international partners. And I think the country platform is t political, but also financial and technical. And here, uh, my point is, you cannot have a country platform that is led from an ex international, yes. external yes. partner. So you need to have someone that has skin in this game, and it comes to these national public development banks that could partner with the World Bank and others, right. but that should lead in the end, just like the government is leading on the political side, uh, the, the, yes. the, the country commitments. Now, of course, I think that's absolutely right. It's, it's easier to do in some countries where there are large, active mm. public development banks and a little bit harder in others. But in every case, I think you have to find the core of what I take away from what yeah. you're saying is that in every context, trying to impose an externally designed and implemented led country platform is not a country platform. It's a platform of donors, partners, funders who try to coordinate As a Frenchman, I would re refuse it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a... We are all coming from, you know... The first history. loan of the World Bank was to France, as you know it. Okay? Yes. Now... Let's, let's, let's go broaden out a little bit from the AFT. And I want to get your take on another issue, which right now, you know, there is a very big expectation that the official development finance mm -hmm. institutions, MDBs, public development banks, DFIs, will be catalysts for mobilizing very large amounts of private finance mm -hmm. for climate and for development. But we also know that so far the experience has not been very encouraging. The mm -hmm. numbers are for MDBs, I think is 0.6 for every dollar. Um, and in low income countries, it's mm -hmm. even less. And yet the expectations are that it'll be multiples of, yeah. of dollars. And I want to, and there's a, also a little bit of skepticism that is perhaps growing that Maybe this is this focus on this big increase in private financing is a way of taking the mm -hmm. accountability away from the needed increase in public financing. And you know, so there's a little bit of, uh, of questioning. I want to get your sense from both your AFD experience, including mm -hmm. you know, you have a private sector arm, Proparco, but also from your engagement through the IDFC. What's your take? How, how should we be thinking about this issue? How, what should be our ambition level, if you like? This question comes from uh, the urgency of climate, actually. Yeah. And it comes from uh, Copenhagen and the climate finance referential mm -hmm. right. that includes from the start public and private money. And this is something that is very different from ODA, because right. ODA, there's never been any intention in ODA to mobilize private finance. It was pure public contribution out of uh, solidarity. And as you know it, we overburdened ODA for decades now with other ob objectives. 
uh, and I value and respect the, the, the credibility, the methodology, the, 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 the institutions that created uh, ODA back in the 19, from 1969 uh, on, my, my birth date actually. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it dates back. <laughs> so 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 this uh, is uh, so it's a young a concept transformation. But my <laughs> point is, it it was helpful for a moment because somehow it helped push ODA to two hundred billion uh, US dollar and climate finance. I think we have reached this one hundred mark. Right. But my feeling and my experience at AFD is it's, it is becoming more and more difficult to convince with such a uh, complex uh, and uh, twin, I would say, uh, referential. So uh, the proposal we, we made in a, in a, in a paper uh, written by, uh, with uh, Thomas Melodio and Jean-David yeah. Naudet uh, about two years ago is to try to redefine these two public policies, development and climate, into two uh, different public policies, one for the most vulnerable, meaning the poorest plus those that are the most affected by climate change. Right. So maybe it's a bit less than what we call ODA right now, but something that would be more, more credible, maybe with condition attached, yep. something yep. a bit more serious, I would say, than the, 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 the what we assembled uh, within the ODA framework for, for such a long time. So that, uh, and in the French system, we said that 50% of our budget resources will be guaranteed to the most vulnerable right. so that you create trust enough to discuss your point, which is how much are we allowed to allocate as concessional resources to, to finance global commons. And to do that, embarking, mobilizing um, uh, uh, other flows, and mostly so can be other public investment, domestic resource mobilization, budget, and public investments and private, of course, by far. And this, the theory of this, the, the, the KPIs of this, uh, the methodology of this has not completely crystallized. Right. And the difficulty is that we are in this passage where we are, we are in between uh, ODA uh, and we need to keep, I would say, the best of ODA right. and the resources of ODA. We don't want less resources and, and come to the new framework uh, that would in the end uh, be bigger, uh, of course, and be clearer also in the way we can convince our own taxpayers that uh, this is uh, valuable and th 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 there's, there's an interest for them in financing uh, these two public policies. So, so that's, and, and the, what happened in France last year, first semester, is uh, we officially adopted this way of thinking. Since now, so we stopped saying ODA, uh, we, we are saying sustainable development investment as a new framework that has two components, this guarantee for the most vulnerable, and that's very important. And uh, uh, my government is pushing me uh, uh, and will ask me my new contract uh, with it uh, to mobilize private finance. Right. One to one for now. Uh, I remember President Bonga, we discussed it this yes. morning. Um, he said one to five or even more in Paris. In, in Paris, yes. In Paris. Yes. Uh, really Maybe challenging. Maybe we get there. Maybe we and get there. And the point is, uh, from something that is overburdened, that has become a bit complex and unclear, have two new uh, sets, two new referentials that are more difficult maybe to attain, right. that are right. clearer, that are stronger, so that we can demonstrate better results. So I think that that, that that covers a lot of ground. And it seems to me that there is one conversation which is about how we think about development, and how we think about public money that is spent mm -hmm. outside our n national borders to achieve either for solidarity or yeah. for dealing with global commons. Is it s useful? to continue with trying to find ways to fit it all into the concept of ODA as we've mm -hmm. known it. Already, 
a lot of ODA in almost every country, the share going to climate, the share going to global yeah. commons is going up. So there is already an erosion and that leads to issues of credibility, yeah. of trust. So I think there is that, that conversation. And as you know, we're actually working on this together right now sure. and trying to find ways to see if we can come up with a clearer proposition. And, and to be legit, to be clear about it, there are people who have legitimate concerns sure. about this road because they think There's a this might in result in from one wor to another worse system. You know, yeah. outcome for all. I agree. But, you know, worth thinking it through. There's a separate point which you've also made, which I think it would be worth just dwelling a little bit more, which is having set aside the objective of mobilizing private money, mm -hmm. Is it just a question of using the grant financing that we set aside for that purpose, however we mm -hmm. classify mm -hmm. it? Or does it also require new instruments, a greater appetite for risk taking in the public mm -hmm. system than we currently have, a willingness to work with the private sector as partners and engagement in co-creating investment opportunities how do you see the change in mindset that will be needed to deliver that kind of scaling up? I mean, for you, even the one-for-one, one, I don't know how easy it is for you to get to one-for-one, one, but, but if you want to get to beyond that, how much of it is... I worry a little bit if we incentivize the private sector only through making it cheaper for them with grant funds. We obviously want to do much more than that. But what, how do you think about that uh, issue? So in the past, we, we created institutions for that. Yes. It's called uh, the, the DFIs uh, right. within uh, the public development banks. For you, uh, that's So Proparco. for us, it's uh, Proparco about um, 50 years ago. Uh, because true that it was what AFD or La Caisse at that yes. time was not able to do. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and now we have this group, uh, uh, of course, with the IFC at the global level, uh, EBRD yep. on the European side, and the 15 European DFIs. Interesting, they have counterparts in um, national systems at national level. Mm -hmm. So this coalition of uh, financial institutions that are specialized into... Uh, uh, attracting private investments and uh, financing uh, private firms uh, is a treasure. Uh, and we have to, 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 to push that, uh, build from that, learn from their uh, instruments. Uh, this is where we kept, for instance, the, the, the capacity to invest in capital and, right. and not only provide uh, no. lending, yeah. loans. Uh, this is where the, 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 the guarantee schemes, uh, which is more in the world of export credit agencies than in the world uh, of public banks, uh, is growing. Uh, so, so that's one part of the answer. And the one-to-one -one, uh, objective that was set for AFD actually is set for, is set for Proparco. And then uh, we have to explore, measure, define the methodology on what the, the public, the, the, the mother, father entities, can also do for, for private. Exactly. And that's more unknown. I mean, there's yes. a bit more, of, well, actually for AFD, we, we, f we feel we are doing something that is helpful for, for private, uh, but, especially, but, uh, uh, but we're, uh, not, we're not able to, for now, to, to clearly measure and yes. put that as a, a KPI for, for our contract with the exactly. French government. So that, that's uh, an avenue, that's uh, something we will try to define. And of course, if we define it for AFD alone, it, it makes no sense I and mean, it has no interest. So we need to have a, a broader discussion. Uh, and, and I think from, from the discussion at the bank today, I think we, we are close to, to having the same uh, question marks uh, in our exactly. institutions. Because in a way, you could argue that historically, we thought of the private sector mobilization mm -hmm as being a responsibility of the DFI arms. Yeah. But in fact, the DFI arms alone, in my view, would never be able to do no. the job. It, requ it requires the, the, the sovereign lending institutions, the advisory institutions. So just take your analogy, to, since you had discussions mm -hmm. today at the World Bank, it's not just IFC, but it's actually IBRD and 
and MIGA and, and everyone collectively it's MIGA, seeing IFC, this as, IBRD, as private sector yeah, window as part, of IDA, as part of their uh, objective. So this new livable planet yeah, exactly. fund, uh, all this has to be leveraged. Yeah. So let, let, let me just now turn a bit from that to finance in common. So, you know, we've talked about it, but it's, it's more than a summit. It's a system. You know, it's, it's a system. <laughs> it's, it's a, I hadn't realized, actually, until recently that it's an organization in some sense, right? It's got a sort of steering committee. Informal, but uh, so, vibrant. So, <laughs> as I understand it, you know, the purpose is to try and see if we can actually align a little bit the approaches mm -hmm. and and frameworks of all of these different institutions within a, uh, towards a common purpose. But of course, they're very different institutions working in different mm -hmm. contexts. So, tell us a little bit about how you see that and and what progress you think is feasible and what is it that is unrealistic. Um, actually, my my own career. Mm. I switched from national duties. Uh, I was the chief of staff of the Minister of Finance to uh, diplomacy and international action. So, uh, so um, I'm, I'm, I know about these banks, both. And in France, as you know it, we have uh, the two oldest yeah. ones. We have uh, since 1816, yeah. after Napoleon stole it all. We have Caisse des Dépôts yep. et Consignation, which is one of the biggest in the world at the heart of our fabric. And we have, uh, well, AFD, yep. born in 1941 uh, in London, yep. a few years before the World Bank, that is the oldest doing uh, international uh, financing. So, and, and at the time, I proposed uh, to merge the two so that we have some sort of French. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, to, to, to do it. And, and it, it, it came from uh, uh, 2015, actually. So the, 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 the point is, uh, I was a negotiator of uh, SDGs and Paris. And I think the financial architecture we inherited is not consistent with the ambition that was set uh, by our leaders in right. 2015. Because if we step, it's not about pure international cooperation. It's really about national transformation. And so we need the two uh, to connect. Uh, and, and, and of course, the, the point is these institutions that are so diverse and this world of public development banks that was so fragmented for so long, uh, sometimes uh, uh, bickering, <laughs> sometimes yep, uh, opposing, yep, yep. Uh, uh, now they have the same mandate. Basically, they, they received in 2015 this mandate to finance climate and yep, development yep. together to do the SDGs. And, and, and so th this is the, the, the reason why they are now discussing uh, all together. And, and yes, it took the form of uh, uh, IDFC first. So the group uh, mixing uh, regional and national public development and international partners like uh, JICA, KFV and AFD. Um, and then it expanded into first finance in common summits. Yes, <laughs> that's how it fixed, got introduced. Yeah. And hopefully turning into finance in common system, work as a system, but maybe an, uh, a, a wider, uh, bigger system than the MDBs themselves. It's very important for the MDBs to, to do more and to uh, work as a system, as President Bonga and others uh, right. are saying, and they're making a lot of uh, good progress on this. But um, they need to stay open, uh, and if we want to be at scale with the ambition, also embark uh, national investments, because the bulk of it, as you know it, the, the politically, financed, financially, the bulk of it yeah. is at national level. I mean, the, the Caisse des Dépôts is uh, 20 times bigger than AFD. So yeah. if you want to have a real effect in the transformation and of France for SDGs and climate, you need to find a way to reach Caisse des Dépôts. And, and they're willing to be reached, yeah. actually. They, they, want, they, they got it. They understand uh, the, 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 the danger we are facing. Never met a CEO of a public development bank. I do not agree with for the last eight years. So it really gives a sense of a, 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 a community 
so now this is what we have uh, gathered in this finance in common uh, system. And I invite uh, all of you, all uh, uh, auditors, to, to, to try to build things within this system and think of it as a wide, large uh, open architecture, architecture of it's public open investment. Architecture in Not way. against yeah, private, yeah. of course. Yeah. No, no, Come back to your previous question. Uh, of course, to mobilize and to protect the most vulnerable. This twin mandate could be applied to each and every public right. development bank everywhere. But there's no reason why finance in common should not include private financial institutions that, that oh, accept sure, and have, in fact, it should encourage that because there's a lot more going to be G common. is yeah, there, exactly. we have a lot so of yeah, impact investors, that yeah. all those that want to, yes, create uh, some sort of co-benefit between public and right. private and working right. with us. So just, just to close then, Omi, because I, I know you had a long day, uh, which is, so you're here today talking to the World Bank, mm -hmm. and you, and it's about partnership with the World Bank. So maybe first just share a little bit what's the nature. I mean, you, you know, there's been partnership for a long, long time, but but how is this uh, getting more articulated, more more formalized, and and also, do you see this as part of your strategy to have partnerships more broadly with other financial? institutions and development institutions? Um, so yes, I'm here to um, say that AFD has become the first partner of the World Bank in a number of projects co-financed. So we, we did uh, 30 billion US dollar for the last decade and 20 uh, for the only five last years. So mm -hmm. we, we, we are sp speeding the up. The has grown up. Yeah, yeah we, are, we are accelerating. And I really want to thank uh, all World Bank colleagues uh, everywhere uh, for this uh, excellent, uh, excellent work, um, which demonstrate that uh, if you go a bit farther uh, and work with national institutions like AFD, you can have uh, very good uh, results, uh, agility, combination of uh, of tools, uh, and, and I think this is what we discussed uh, today with President Banga and with many uh, uh, World Bank staff uh, this afternoon. I had the occasion to talk to all uh, those willing to, to push for part more, par more, more partnerships. So that, uh, that, that's one. And of course, uh, I see this partnership hopefully as an inspiration in this finance in common thing <laughs> I'm trying uh, uh, to describe because uh, uh, for me uh, the World Bank is uh, I would say the, the public bank uh, of all uh, public banks right. it's right. our it's our global uh, platform uh, so I got very uh, clearly from President Bonga his uh, willingness to 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 work within the finance in common framework and also uh, his attention to, to, to be very operational, to demonstrate that uh, it is, it is that there's something coming from this type of cooperation, more results, more outcomes, uh, more solidarity, uh, again, a wider system that is emerging. So I find it extremely uh, promising uh, and we will build from there. I'm also extremely interested in of course, the way the, the bank is uh, uh, reforming this evolution framework and the structure of the bank itself. I mean, right. what will become from IDA with IDA 21? Right. Uh, again, this is the capacity to finance the most vulnerable, in my right. view, um, embarking climate with development. And what will become, uh, again, from uh, IBRD, MIGA, IFC, uh, as I said, private sector window of uh, IDA. I mean, all the concessional resources that could leverage uh, more um, international, national, public, and private flows. So we're not far. Um, my guess is we're not that far uh, without changing it all because, of course, I know the political situation, headwinds uh, everywhere. Of so I, I understand people saying uh, we need to be satisfied with incremental 
changes, concrete decisions, and I, I fully respect that. Uh, my guess is we, we, we need both. We need a vision, we need um, something that is a bit different from the framework we set back in the 1970s, I would say, and even different from that we framed in Copenhagen, uh, and then transform it into very concrete uh, and yeah, po positive should, decisions. I, I think we should, I mean, my personal view is that we should be ready to take whatever incremental changes and improvements mm. we can make. But I don't think we can afford to be satisfied by them for the very reason that you have said, which is that on the current trajectory that we have, it becomes we are difficult. not going yeah. to get to the objectives that we have set for ourselves. And uh, I think that unless we keep reminding ourselves of mm. the gap between the trajectory and the projections, if you look at yeah. the, the growth projections for middle-income countries, low-income countries, if we look at the uh, investment rates, mm. they don't see the pickup that is necessary to deliver on these yeah. ambitions. So I, I, I'm with you that I think we, we need to build on every piece we can but I think we have to and keep our eye firmly on that. We're reaching uh, limits, I think, yeah. with and the existing At some point, uh, you know, we are going yeah. to have to get out of our yeah. frameworks. And, and the timeline is interesting because we have 2024. Yeah. That is, well, half the world, the population is going to elections. So yeah. Yeah. only probably incremental changes can be achieved this, this year. year. But Maybe NCQG yeah. in Baku, whatever. And then we have 2025 when yeah. the, the political <laughs> scene will be clarified. Uh, and and of course the tenth anniversary of 2015. So yep. there will be a lot of expectation the, the pressure summit on, next uh, year? and There's we have the Addis the Plus this summit, summit in Spain yep. next July and COP30 uh, in Belém. Yep. So I think m we should work seriously, technically, probably within the finance track this year, to build so that, that we have yes. something yes. to propose Agreed. our leaders. Again, when the question will come, uh, what have you done since 2015? Uh, and, and when it's extremely likely that the results that we have on either development or actually if you look at what's happening to climate yeah. change, they're not going to be <laughs> anything that will no. make us complacent. No. So, so I agree. And with public opinion that are, are more moving. and more difficult to convince. Yeah. So we, we need something to change. So there is clearly a job to be done. Mm -hmm. Rémi, I want to thank you for, for taking the time to come and uh, talk with us. And uh, as, as all of you who have been listening to this conversation will realize, that they, this is a, something that we need to continue to work on, talk about, and, and begin to show better results on. And I think that's the message that I want to leave us with. Thank you. Thanks to you and all the CGDev colleagues.